Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAdamation.com and today in this video we are going to talk about Project Thai. If you have never heard about Project Thai, Project Thai helps to make deploying, testing and also developing microservices and distributed application much much easier. So if you are if you know how this Docker works and how this microservices can be deployed in the Docker containers, we always have to create Docker files, Docker compose files, we need to have Docker up and running within our machine. And then we need to uh, spin up this Docker Compose by building the application and then deploying it in the container, the networks and all those services needs to be set up so that the wirings will be done. And also if we wanted to deploy these in the Kubernetes and see how this uh, can be run in a distributed architecture, those requires Kubernetes like kubectl and you also need to have like a mini cube or something like that to deploy that in the uh, in the pods and then run the container so those are things that we need to do almost all the time to make our microservices deployable and run in multiple different places but in order to avoid these problems and make just like a very very super simple setup like without having the kubernetes or uh, dockers in place just run them within your local machine Thai comes in picture project Thai includes a local orchestrator to make developing microservices easier and the ability to uh, deploy microservices to kubernetes with minimal configuration it is very very straightforward and super easier so you can just go ahead and check the github.com slash dot net slash Thai project and it is it's really cool project and that's what we're going to be talking in this particular video pretty quickly so uh, if you see this application you might have seen this kind of application a lot like it, there is a uh, there is a web application over here and there is a uh, ASP.NET web API project and these two projects are uh, can be deployed using a docker files as you can see here there is docker file for the web application and there is a docker file for the product API which is the API application and both of these applications are deployed using a docker compose file as you can see here there are different services and they are running in a separate network so that they can communicate with each other and things of that nature but in order for this to be running you need to have uh, a docker up and running as well so basically as you can see within my machine i have a docker uh, desktop running and it has all these images the ea api as well as the ea web app so these are the two services that i'm pointing to the ea underscore api as well as the ea uh, web app so I have already built this and if I run this, it is going to run this in my local machine using the Docker Compose. But I'm not going to run this whole application in the Docker this time. Rather, I wanted to run this in the local machine and how I do that. So as I told you, the project I comes in picture where it is going to do all those things for you much, much easily. So you can just go to the documentation over here and you can see that getting started and basic tutorial to run them in local machine. So you can just see that. So for the getting started, all it gives you is the installation part like dot net tool install hyphen g microsoft high and that is this version i think it's still an alpha version but uh but yeah it's maturing tool and it is quite good so i have already installed this tool within my machine all you have to do to run this particular tool is you need to go to the project directory and just do thai run that's it and make sure that the solution that you are going to be running should have both this project in place so i'll show you what i really mean about all these things over here so if you can see within my project over here so if i just open in the explorer uh, and if you see this particular project so this is the project over here and there is the docker compose file and there is the docker file for this ea web app as well as the project product api right so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to be running any of these things uh, using the docker file so i'm going to remove the docker file here and also in the EA web app, I'm going to be removing the Docker file here. So we don't really require any Docker file. And I'm also going to remove the Docker compose file. So you can see that now it is literally an application without any of the Docker setup in place. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run both these application now together. So if I want to run this application just uh, over here, like uh, within my local machine, what I used to do is I go to the writer over here and then I hit the run. So it runs both the project for me. But if I don't want to use the IDE all the time, but I want this application to be up and running, then all I have to go do is I just need to go to the terminal over here. Uh, and then let's say if I do an LS, you can see this comes in. Uh, and then over here, I'm just going to say tie run 
and all I have to do is I need to give a uh, project name, which is nothing but the EA web app. So if I just give this uh, web applications project over here, you can see that it is already running the application, which is nothing but the web app for me. And you can see that it is running in the port number 8080 of my local host. There you go. Uh, so this is the project type which I was talking about. Now, if I want to access this application, if I just click this, you can see that my application is now loaded up pretty quickly, which is cool. So, but as you can see, if I try running the same application, let me stop this once again, and let me try running it again. And if I go over here, you can see that the page is loaded. I think the page is a bit broken. Maybe it's my caching issue or something like that. So if I go to the incognito window and do this, you can see that this is the dashboard of the project tie. So you can see that it's gonna show you uh, my application, which is the EA web app, which is running over here. Also shows you what are the different details uh, for this particular replica, pretty much like uh, how it shows in the Kubernetes uh, world. And also there is a log that you can view for which is coming directly from the application. So it also keeps following if there is going to be a new log coming up. And we can access the application using the local host over here. You see that this is the web app that I'm uh, going to be accessing. But now if I try accessing the products over here, you can see that once I click the product, it is going to go and communicate with my product API project, which is currently down i mean it's not up and running but in order for the application to be up and running i need to spin up that particular application as well so how do i do that and once again if we wanted to run two projects which are pointing to same solution then all we have to do is we just have to go over here instead of running just one application which is the uh, the project like the ea web app we just have to say uh, Thai run. So if you just give Thai run, it is going to run the whole application. So let me also show you my project structure a bit. You can see that this is the EA web app. This is the product API and the solution folder is sitting outside, but this is referring to both EA web app as well as the product API project together. So now if I just say uh, Thai of run over here, you will notice that this time it is going to execute the application in such a way that it is gonna spin up both the product API as well as the EA web app together. And now, which means if I try accessing the tie this time, you will notice that we have the product API as well as the EA web uh, app project coming over here. So if I go to the local host this time, and if I hit product, you will notice that our API project comes in as well over here. So that is the beauty that you can see that I have not even spinned up any containers and there is no Docker Compose, but both the microservices, the distributed architecture applications can be spinned up much, much easily over here. So you can do almost everything that you can do with your application from here, which is cool. So these are all amazing things that we can do over here. And if I wanted to, let's say, if my project um, is trying to access a port, which is not something, uh, not like 8080 or maybe you can see that every time the port number which is being listed by project tie is like 6106 or 61063 is like, like a random port number but i always wanted the port number to be a specific port number like 5001 or 8001 something like that then we could do that using the project ties um, yaml file we can define that as well so all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go over here to this uh, local machine uh, folder and then I'm going to say tie.yml file and this yaml file is going to have some details like I can give a name let's say project tie and then I can also give some services so these are the services pretty much like the docker services but it is not actually the service really and we can give the name of the service uh, the first name of the service is going to be uh, let's say the web app and we can also define what are the project and the bindings and stuff so within the project all i have to give is the ea uh, web app slash uh, ea web app dot cs proj something like that so this is the project and we can also define the bindings if you wanted to something like this so I'm not going to really type all these details over here, but I'm just going to paste, which I have already uh, typed before. So you can see that this is the um, this is the project. 
and this is the bindings where it has the protocol of HTTP and the port number of 5001 and similarly for the other uh, project uh, service which is nothing but the product API service I am just giving the product API and then the product API or CS project something like that so which is cool so yeah I think these are all good and we need to do remove this intendation a bit and even this intendation should come out over here which is cool and I think there is a space required here and you can see that the IDE is already giving me some uh, intelligence over here that these are the things that we need to fix like that which is pretty awesome so now I am going to go back again to our terminal over here and if this time if I do an ls we have a tie.yaml file now if I just do tie run you will notice that this time it is not going to take the solution files rather it is going to take this yaml file the tie.yaml file and you can see that this time it has bounded to localhost of 8001 and localhost of 5001 over here you'll notice that the binding is 5001 and 8001 something like that and if i go to the web app to the 5001 port number and if i just go to the products you notice that the product comes in and again it's talking with the port number of 8001 automatically so this is amazing so these are the things that you can see that using project tie we can easily deploy the applications within uh, within no time without having uh, a docker up and running within our machine and also we don't really need to create the docker file or docker compose files and everything it's all going to be something that we can easily do in a much much easier fashion uh, using project tie so that's it guys this is what it, project tie is all about and i have not really covered about how you can deploy that in the kubernetes and how you can push it the changes to the uh, from kubernetes to uh, the other um, other aws or azure but but yeah this is the start for project tie and you can do everything by reading the documentation so this is pretty amazing so that's it guys once again thank you so much for watching this video you guys have a great day